Hi, good morning Beyond Here family. How are you doing? I know you guys have not seen me in a while and my sincere apologies but sometimes life gets busy and get in the way of you doing what you normally do. However, I'm back with you today and today I want to share with you a very interesting topic. Now we often hear or we often heard as we grow up or as we become adults that the man is the head of the home and sometimes we confuse this to mean that when the Bible says that we confuse it to mean that okay it means that the man, quote unquote, this damnering figure in the home, and it is whatever he says go, the wife doesn't have any say in the affairs of the home. But is this true though? Is this really what the Bible was saying to us? I beg to disagree. That's not what it was saying. So in Ephesians 5, 23, the Bible makes it clear who should be the head of the household according to God's design for the family. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the savior, right? But what does that mean? It, it stated that the husband is the head of the home. So let us dive in a little deeper and let's look at it from this perspective that I have that I want to share with you and hope that it will be a blessing to you, right? So remember that we're talking about understanding the meaning of being the head of the home or the head of the family and we know that when we're saying this we're referring to or to the husbands of the home right so but this really means that as the head of the home this is a leadership um, responsibility and so you're gonna exercise leadership but in doing so this implying this is implying that making decisions in the home is going to be to the benefit of both partners not um those which you're not going to make decisions based on just what suits you have as the husband but you're going to make the decisions that you make they are going to cut across a level playing field where the husband and the wife are going to be satisfied with the decisions that are made. And this is one of the surest way we can exercise these um, men as a husband in the home can exercise these principles or these responsibilities in marriage as um, as the first leader of the home and so let us not um, run away with the thought that um, okay the man is the is the head of the home and so he is going to be over his wife with this beating stick and whatever he says, that's what goes. She can't ask any questions. She can't disagree. That's not what this is, is meant to be. Christ is basically saying to us, just like how God has respect for his church, how he treats his church with love and how he nurtures the church and how he leads the church towards his father, God, he is saying that as the man in your home, you're the head in leading your family to Christ. You're the head in making the decisions 
to love your family, to love your wife as Christ, to love the church. And when you do that, then it's going to be a level playing field. It's not going to be a damnering field where whatever the decisions that I make, the decisions are to benefit me and me alone. That is not so because that would have been selfish. Remember as Christ make the decision to go and to die on the cross for us? This decision was not a selfish decision. He did not do it so that he can be saved. He did it so that the entire world will accept him and be saved by that action. And so this is the principle on which this um, scripture was um, was um, stated or written. And so husband in co-leadership with their wives will establish a more fulfilling relationship. So to exercise leadership implies making decisions which benefit both partners, not those which suit me, the husband. This is the surest way of exercises, exercising responsibility in marriage. The leader is the, leader is the first, the first to serve. So if you're a leader, you're the first to serve. So as you become the leader in your home, leadership at the bottom line simply means to serve. And where are you going to be serving? You're going to be serving your wife. How, how are you going to be serving your wife? We're not saying that you are to become a slave. Slave and serving is two different things or um, being overburdened with everything of the whole. That's not what we're saying. But when you serve, you serve from a perspective that taking yourself out of the picture, it's not self-centered. It is geared towards the betterment of the entire family. The family is not built upon you, but upon Christ. And you get the privilege to become the co-laborer with Christ in leading your family to Christ and ensuring that as you lead your family, the principles of Christ is brought out in your serving, in your leadership. And the quote that I, I read earlier, um, it's from the book Happy Couples which was written by Dr. Juliana Mangolas and Annette D. Mangolas. They are a couple, I believe. So let's, let's, um, let's take this into consideration as Christ seeks for the family to be For the family, as Christ seeks for the family to demonstrate what it is like for us, for a family to be Christ-like, for a family to develop the principles that God sets on the table for us. Now, guys, thank you for watching. I hope that this short video will inspire you brought something back to your mind that you never thought about or you would have learned something from this video and if that was so i am looking forward to hear from you in the comment section yes that's where we get to talk back to each other and have that little rapport so please guys and if you want to see more tips on family let me know put it into the comment section I'm willing to dive in to this because the family is something that I truly, truly, truly love. And each day I strive for my family to be a Christ-centered one. So as we grow together and as we groom our family for Christ, 
Let us do so by working together. Share with me your take on the topic. Let me know what you think. And see you next time in the next video. Please guys remember to share the video, to comment and to click the post notification so you don't miss out whenever I post a video. Please guys. Um, and just before we close this video, there's something that I, it gives you a little more clarity that I wanted to read for you. It says, uh, some principles relating to what it means to be the head of a household. So the first one is, so I'm gonna share three brief ones with you. The first one is, a head goes first. Godly leadership is servant leadership. The head of a household is to be the role model for everyone else, yes. If he or she wants the family to speak kindly and respectfully, he or she must model that type of speech, yes. There's no way it's going to happen and you're not instilling it, you're not doing it. If a husband wants his wife to honor him, he must honor her. If a single mom wants her children to have a good work ethic, she must demonstrate what that looks like to them. And number two, a head takes responsibility. It's about responsibility, guys. When God handed over roles for the family, he placed the harvest burden on the men. Headship may sound like superiority until we actually read God's expectations. The head of a household is responsible before God for the spiritual and emotional well-being of the family. Yes. God judged Eli not for restraining his wicked sons. Eli knew about their evil actions, but did nothing about it. So God held Eli responsible as the head of the home. And third and finally, a head receives 51% of the vote. Two people will not agree on everything. No, it will never happen. No matter how closely aligned they are. And when there is a stand, who gets the deciding vote? God has decreed that it should be the head of the household. The husband, if he is present, of course, a wise head will consult his wife. Heads do not know everything, even though they carry the weight of responsibility for the decisions. So it is only smart to seek counsel and advice from the woman he from the woman his life to remember and when we put all of this together we would have established the family that god wants here on her earth let us be mindful of the fact that husbands wives as we come together as a family, it's about serving. We're serving each other to the honor and glory of God. So, before we run away with the notion that the man is the head of the home and it's a dictatorship, 
let's look at God's perspective, what it is that he meant and what he desires for the family. He desires that a man be in a leadership serving position and lead his family to Christ. Ensure that his family is stable spiritually and emotionally. Remember, as a man of the home, as you lead, that God is expecting you not to just make decisions, but to consult your wives as you make these decisions and your home will be a beautiful home. You will be practicing a little, a little heaven down here so that when we get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Looking forward to see you in the comment section. Please guys, have a blessed, wonderful day. Remember to put God first in everything that you do and he will direct your path. Blessings. God be with you. Bye-bye now.